creature. Hey guys, what's going on? Happy Halloween 2019. I'm one of your hosts for this evening, this afternoon, whenever you are choosing to listen to this. I am Mike the Birdman Dog, but I am not alone as I trek into the dangerous, mind-bending world of HP Lovecraft. I am joined with... Alex, I think I'm dying. <laughs> yes, you have indeed devoured uh, something which led you to the Mountains of Madness. Fucking Dorito. Doritos, those, what are those things called where they're like... Rolling? Dynamite or Diamante or no, whatever? No, for God's sakes, like, you received a press package that included them. You're like, I can't have these because hot things make me not feel good. I'm like, okay, I'll have them. Ate one. I was like, it's pretty hot. Ate the whole bag, which is not a big bag, like a personal size one. Yeah. And then I, he, I get really quiet. Mike looks over at me and I'm going, oh, I'm making unintelligible sounds. Like, I'm dying. And, like, I felt like I, I was... My stomach doesn't feel bad because, as you know, I've talked about after having my stomach surgery, I don't feel what my stomach feels. It's just the rest of my body reacts. <laughs> had I, here's the thing, had I still had the feeling in my stomach like normal, I would have been nauseous as hell. Oh, yeah. And, but I don't feel you that. You were sweating. So I ate all of it real fast. And then the problem was the rest of my body went, oh, my God, why aren't you listening to your belly? Your belly's so defective. <laughs> oh, my, it's so hot. <laughs> I was going to cry. So, so thank hard. you, Call of Duty, for trying to murder my co-host. Fuck you, Chili Lemon fucking... Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. It, it fucked me up, like, for ten minutes. Like, so bad. But I, th- I think you're, like, licking toilet paper to get the taste off your It was that... Oh. I, I was almost crying, and everybody's laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> it has been one of those nights... There's my wife laughing at Alex. So, yes, guys, we are back for yet another streaming commentary, which if you want to follow along with us this evening, you can find the movie we're watching on TubiTV.com. Alex will have a link in this episode's description for the movie. And uh, hopefully you will have a fantastic time with us tonight as we take a look at a movie I've only ever seen once. Once again, going back to my... Um, I saw this once as as a child sort of thing. Uh, the Unnameable is the movie we're going to be watching tonight, which is a horror movie that came out. And a little, just going to pull up a little bit of detail on this. Um, so it's been a while. The original Unnameable, there are two of these movies, uh, originally came out in June of 1988. God, sorry. <clears throat> it's I got, okay. I got those death burps right now. <laughs> Good. Said, what year was it again? Sorry. 1988. 88. Okay. Which is a good year for horror. Basically when the oh. 80s horror, oh God, was at kind of its height where you had monster monster movies, creature features. You didn't have a whole lot that were um, adapting Stephen King. There were there would be some that would come later, like Brian Yunza's uh, Necronomicon, Book of the Dead. Later on, you would get... Uh, Dagon, you get the Call of Cthulhu movie, which is loose, if I remember. It's so, yeah. loosely related. I absolutely loved uh, the, uh, the 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 John Carpenter movie. Was it like 94? 93 oh, or 94? in the mouth of madness. Yeah, I love that movie. Yeah, very much influenced by Lovecraft. Sort of like, do you read such a game? See, I thought it was a Lovecraft thing. Yeah, very much influenced by it. Um, so it was like, I guess he just didn't want to adapt well, yeah, I mean, Lovecraft movies are notoriously hard to adapt. There is a movie that that premiered at TIFF in 2019 called The Colors Out of Space, which is based upon an H.P. Lovecraft story that came out in the 1930s. Um, and a lot of Lovecraft stuff is pre-1940. Now, there are things in the Cthulhu mythos. Um, other authors have contributed, like August Derleth, I believe is the author's name. Robert Block did the Mind Parasites. He's also, oh, for some reason I thought he was the same guy who did Starship Troopers. That's Robert Heinlein. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of people have contributed. Call of Cthulhu came into the public kind of consciousness. I'd say probably like the 80s and 90s when you started seeing horror movies. Metallica did that song, Call of Cthulhu, on, I think it was the Ride the Lightning album. Yeah, it's the, the instrumental on there. And Trapped Under Ice is another Lovecraftian kind of song, too. Funnily, I, I feel like 
British horror was closer to Lovecraft than actual American horror. Well, yeah, because American horror was very much creature feature. It was the monster that was made in the lab, or it was just the spooky thing. Like, would, would the closest thing to like Lovecraftian back in the day have been, uh, like the Body Snatchers movies? Kind of, because like, or or like the thing from outer space. You know, the, the, like John Carpenter's the thing, but the one that it was a remake of. Yeah, kind of. Like, like Lovecraft co- stuff is always it's always alien. It's strange. It's not so alien, like as in xenomorph. But think of things you can't understand. Well, it's more yeah. psychological horror, so but I, there is a creature element to it. So I'm almost thinking like that 1950s movie that the thing was based on. I, the thing from outer space, yeah, or something. Where like where that. It, where basically. You know, it's an alien shapeshifter that can take the form of anybody, and it's a cosmic horror you can't understand. Exactly. It's the sort of thing where man is not meant to know. And there have been many great adaptations of the work over the years. They've been collected into many different volumes for reading. There's the role playing game called Cthulhu by Chaosium. So Cthulhu is definitely a thing. Like you say it to the average nerd, they know what you're talking about. Hell, even the average person, if you say Cthulhu, they're like, I know it kind of that is or they know like it was the word they'll know it was parodied in like futurama or yeah or, like they'll or they'll be like oh that's the giant tentac- squid guy or, or they'll be like oh alien tentacles that's the closest people can associate with it yeah exactly so um adapting cthulhu or anything lovecraft has always been kind of tricky to film because how do you capture cosmic horror Stuart gordon i think was the director who did a movie in the 80s called from beyond and that kind of dealt with like things beyond perception sort of thing so there other people have tried but the unnameable um, was adapted from another short story, which I've only read like once. Basically, this movie, it's a haunted house movie. Whereas The Unnameable 2 is the sequel, which is more of a creature feature. Yeah. So, And, and for anybody that is wondering, like, if they if they haven't been a fan or seen some of these, because they're a little more obscure, these, these sorts of films, the closest in pop culture would probably be the Hellboy movies. Yeah, yeah, like, because yeah, they're, they're, Hellboy they're, would fight Lovecraftian. Especially the, the first Hellboy movie. Yes. Where they're basically trying to summon an elder god. Yeah, they're basically trying to summon, like, as as a Thoth. So, yeah, that's a really, really good pull. So, anyway, without any further ado, as we're watching this on TubiTV.com, you will get some ad breaks in here. So your time hopefully will sync up with... with with ours? Yeah, it seems to be they do a minute of ads and then they'll do a quick 10 or 15 second one partway through, like on the 15 minutes. And then on the half hour marks is when you get the one minute. Very similar to television, only unlike television, it's not like five minutes of ads. Yeah, these just drop in. They're in and out within 15, 20 seconds. And, so, and using an ad blocker does not block them. So you'll still get the same gaps in between. Yeah. So uh, like I said, we're going to kick things into the unnameable. Hopefully you enjoy it this evening. I'm now pressing the play button. And you should see some kind of an ad. This one just happens to be an, an insurance ad. Yeah, it looks like uh, if you're in Canada, it might be pulling very limited ads because it goes regionally. Yeah. Okay, the- Unearth Films. That's the company that put out The Dark Side of the Moon that I reviewed. Oh. So they're putting out remastered blu ray So that might... Oh, that's the... This was the other one they were releasing, but I, I requested a copy, but we didn't get it. That's unfortunate. But we... So... Because of that, I do know that other uh, films, they're remastering things pretty good. This will be a new remaster. This won't be an old uh, print. Because, That's pretty uh, cool. Because the Dark Side of the Moon one I covered mm-hmm. was dramatic. Like, like we're talking Arrow film slash uh, Scream Factory levels of restoration. And I, I'm always appreciative because one of the things I've learned in the last uh, month, specifically, when I did the interview with uh, David Weiner from... Um, in search of darkness is digital film preservation, especially now for old horror movies is so important because they may only be available on VHS. So unless you get a hold of those masters, these films may get lost in time. You're finding more and more doing them. And the, probably the the biggest proponent of it would be uh, film chest slash vinegar syndrome. Mm -hmm. They have uh, a warehouse with like, I think it's the advertised as the largest, uh, 35 millimeter archive that isn't owned by like the Library of Congress. Uh, so they're releasing under their own brands or f- even remastering and cleaning up for other companies. Uh, like uh, they've done some of the, the print remasters for Arrow and for um, 
for Scream Factory. Mm-hmm. So you've got those companies that we just listed. You've also got Blue Underground, Synapse Films, and maybe one or two smaller ones that maybe only release one or two films a year. But between like the five or six companies, they're basically taking up the fight of restoring a lot of these genre films that you wouldn't normally be able to get any other way because they either the companies that own them are gone, yeah, or they might have been like old MGM releases or something that fell by the wayside. And you know, it's film dorks that are like restoring these. Um, oh, absolutely! They're they're getting the best prints, and sometimes if the film is damaged beyond repair, they leave the damage in because they it's like that's the only copy we have available. We may as well get a fully you know transcribed print. Yeah. Uh, Exactly. Like, I want more companies to do this because there are some gems. Yes, the 80s had a lot of 80s schlock and sh- schlock and shock is how I would describe these movies. Well, and, but they're yeah. not all bad. Because remember, the six, not the 60s, but the 70s was the era of the TV horror film and the TV movie. Uh, you know, it extended into the 80s, but in the 80s, it was all about the direct to video movie. Yeah, because that uh, market exploded. Specifically for horror. And then in the 90s, it was all about the direct cable. Uh, and then the mix of everything. Because like, I would say the height of the video rental store was probably 88 to about 99. Yeah, and I would agree. Like, that 11-year period, the 90s was king because tapes became cheap enough to rent for everybody. Everybody owned a VHS player by then. And that's when you were getting a lot of the action films. There weren't a lot of direct-to-video action in the, in the 80s. It was pretty much... All you horror. had Canon and Carlico it, or whatever. Yeah, it was, but it, but those always went to theaters. It was basically horror, and I, even horror stuff went to theaters. But like, basically, if you were getting direct to video in the eighties, it was most likely horror or sci fi. Yeah, and you could take, um, you could take chances with like horror movies, and that's yeah. why a lot of people like you got all the really weird ones. You got things like any of the David Cronenberg stuff was weird. That was a chance they well, took. And I mean, getting into this, obviously, there's a creepy old man. He's in the building. There's somebody breaking on the door, which is creepy as hell. So, yeah, well, yeah, like it was the 90s became the, if you notice, the king of the uh, direct to video action and kung fu flicks. Yeah, and the 80s was all horror, all horror and sci fi. Yeah. Because that's when they still put a lot of money in direct to video stuff. Yeah, I mean, even looking at this, we're only a couple minutes into it, but it looks competent you know yeah. something shit within like five minutes well and the fact was back then if it was shit it was generally shot on video and if it was anything decent it was still shot on film and like we're not talking cheapy 16 millimeter pretty even like the cheapest direct to video or cheapest theatrical film used 35 millimeter back then still and you can also tell i think by the type of subject matter that gets tackled whether the director or the writer or the producers are into it. And to be an HP Lovecraft fan, it's a name you may have heard, but you don't necessarily may understand, but it's a name that, that genre fans are intimately familiar with. Oh yeah. Whether they've read the short story of call of Cthulhu or, uh, the shadow over in Somoth, there's always something and everybody has, like I said, they want, I think a a lot of people dig the idea of the Cthulhu mythos, or at least the general idea of something weird beyond your comprehension. And it's not Freddy. It's not Jason. It's not pinhead even. It's something different. Oh yeah. And it takes the right type of person to be involved in a project like this to bring it to life with le- not just a sense of uh, of authenticity with a sense of I want to entertain the audience here's something weird. Especially when a lot of these actors were doing their best and it wasn't like can't be on purpose. Yeah, exactly. Like like I I genuinely believe a lot of these people are getting the best stuff they possibly can. You know, if this movie was 10 years later, it would have been like John Hurt playing him. It's a similar sort of role. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love when they show like old dudes wearing nightcaps. Oh. Uh, well, we saw our first death. Why did he let the person out? He was trying to reason with, with it. Well, that's not happening now. That's gross. Didn't even eat the heart? What a, what a waste.
It looks like everybody's dressed like Mick Fleetwood from Fleetwood Mac, the drummer. <laughs> Look, especially on the right there. Or we were, was, or or we were just watching NWA wrestling. Yeah. They, they look like uh, Aaron Stevens. Yeah. The, for, the former Damien Sandow as, anyway, yeah, Tropical Pirates. Would you watch that movie? Fuck I'd, yes. I'd watch especially that movie. Especially if it had Damien Sandow. <laughs> but we can't look at his eyes. <laughs> This is only an, an hour show. I will wait. <laughs> if we haven't dated the episode horribly now. We haven't. <laughs> it's always on YouTube. And and you, NWA Power Hour. You know, that's a, another thing. I'm surprised a lot of film companies, some of them are taking advantage where like you can rent movies or stuff like that. Like Some people, if you're willing to look, put old VHS rips up on YouTube. And me and Alex have taken advantage of that for Santa with muscles, which I think yeah. actually got a Blu-ray oh, remaster oh, this year. It's getting a Blu-ray in about a month, and guess who's getting a copy for review? Oh, God. I already asked for it. Um, it's Mill Creek putting it out. I said, can I get it? And they, they that's the only time they responded directly. They said, it's cheap you're getting it. <laughs> because it, it's they're releasing it, I think, for 10 bucks retail. Um, but it's the first time it's ever being released on Blu-ray. So, so Hogan needs money. No, more like uh, they have the library that has Hogan stuff in it. It's it it's kind of crazy though, just the fact that people are willing to go back. As we talked about film restoration just a couple couple of minutes ago, people are willing to upload rare VHSs or yeah. rare film. And prints. did you notice that sometimes, even if they have a copyright holder, they don't pull them down because they're VHS. They don't know who holds it too. Exactly. So that is where we get a lot of the wrestler, a lot of the direct to video stuff, or like you have PM Release Group. Has, there hasn't been a PM releasing DVD since, like, Madison or somebody. Remember Madison, that cheap company put all those out? It's been probably 10, 12, 15 years in some cases since those DVDs came out. And until it's probably going to be Mill Creek because they, the, <laughs> they pick up all the dead licenses. Now, this one, I think, has a release in the UK. I don't know if there's a Region 1 release. But if it's available uh, it's, on Tubi, you can it, stream it. No, there, there is a Region 1 because I requested it. Oh, right, right yeah. from Arrow. Right? Yeah, well, it was, uh, it was uh, put out by Unearth Films, um, which remastered by the same studios that do Arrow and everything. So that release apparently had a bunch of behind-the-scenes stuff. You know, Who knows? It might eventually show up, and if we get it, then we'll cover, we can review it and tell if it looks better than this. But this already looks like a good print. Mm-hmm. Don't you love how they always have the tweed jackets? Yes, and this guy is supposed to be a very big Lovecraft curious. He's supposed to be Randolph Carter, who I think was a character from Dream Quest of Unknown Kadaeth. I think is where he appears. I know mostly of Randolph Carter from the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game, which I will fully admit is where a lot of my knowledge for the mythos comes from, is the RPG stuff. Yeah, I've never known the, the mythos. Uh, here's the thing. I have the complete works of H.P. Lovecraft because I uh, paid $25 on Amazon when they had a pre-order for, like, you know, a thick leather-bound hardcover. You know when they do those, like, because a lot of them are public domain. They just publish a whole bunch together. Mm-hmm. And I, I wanted it because it looked cool. And one day I do plan to read it, but it's like 980 pages of, like, Bible paper. It's It's a difficult read just because it's weird language. And Lovecraft himself... He's a weird looking dude. He's a weird looking racist. He's a, yeah. Like, like Call of Cthulhu has not aged well. Um, it's like, oh, try reading the Boy Scouts of, of America and the and the Scouting for Boys in Canada books from the they, they only updated them in like the last ten years. The books that we had to read as kids were from like the fifties and forties. And it was that stuff was full on racist, full on sexist, and it was like kind of can a girl join the Boy Scouts? No, flat out. <laughs> no, it's like should you learn to cook in the original books? It's like, no, the Girl Scouts will do that for you. Oh, God. Yeah. There's a, there's a bunch of controversy there. But, yeah, any book written before 1970 is generally like that. Unless it's a sci-fi book where they're trying to be progressive. Um, one of the things to talk about is a lot of Lovecraft uh, protagonists are very scholarly. They're very intelligent. They're basically meant to be like an educated man trying to face down things they don't understand. That's one thing I've always appreciated about, so, at least this portrayal of, of so, Randolph so his, Carter. So his tropes are very similar to Stephen King then, except Stephen King's are always about, there's the one father who's a drunk, 
there's the so and so from this part, and they're always the same. Like he always has the same basic background as similar yeah. to these. Or they'll be an ordinary person caught up against blah 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 blah. Like his protagonists, they're they're flawed usually in some ways, but typically they're university educated sort of thing. Okay, so obviously they're just basically talking folklore and explaining. Yeah, they're, they're talking about the haunted Winthrop house, I think, if I rem- remember right. Because, you know, spending time in a haunted facility is a great idea. Even Absolutely. if you don't believe, I kind of believe you're you're kind of tempting fate by doing that anyway, you know what I mean? You're poking the bear. Oh, totally. But then again, I'm of the mindset, what if I'm wrong? Like, I'm always kind of curious to know, like, you know, this could be a great adventure. Like, I, I, like, like, like I've said on the show, and this doesn't mean to be a braggart, I'm not afraid of much, and I'm always very curious, like, what if something fucked up does happen? Because that's a memory you'll never forget. Which can go both good and bad, but then again, you could also end up sliced up like fucking Freddy Krueger. You could, but where's the fun in that? Exactly. Like, you know, you you got to live. You got to have the adventure. You got to have that story. Hey, I stayed in a haunted house. Now, if you told me, hey, we're going to stay in, like, I don't know, the hotel from The Shining, we may have a question. I'm not going to room 238 and fuck that noise. Um, Certain places you just don't go. But then again, like I said, there's always curiosity. Because the amount of times I hear people talk about, oh, I'm going to go to that insane asylum and stay overnight. Okay, you're asking for trouble. <laughs> 80s hair. Even when she's trying to be conservative, it's like, gotta have poofy bangs. Of course. Also, one of the things I love about Lovecraftian settings is one of his most iconic is from the town of Arkham, where most of, most of the mythos happens in and around Massachusetts. Um, Miskatonic University. Love that idea. Like, for years, I've always wanted a Miskatonic University hoodie or a, or a, a bumper sticker or even an official diploma from there. Because typically, uh, the Miskatonic University always has the Forbidden Library. We can look at the Necronomicon or Cult de Ghouls or other uh, books of forbidden knowledge from the special interest section. I'm trying to, I can't remember the name of the professor that presides over it, but he's not in this movie, just Randolph Carter. Um, man, I've really had a chance to be a dork over some of these things, haven't I? Well, I'm just paying attention because I like the uh, the architecture of the building. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I, I love when they set things at the university and production design or location scouting, rather, kind of nails it. With Lovecraft, you got to nail the setting because it sells the believability. I, I'm honestly surprised that they made the colors out of space because the story itself, I don't think it's very good. I would have done something like Haunter in, in the Dark, which... If I remember right, it's a Narla Hotep story, which is the guy with like a thousand faces who will kill you 
or his own his only aim is to drive humanity mad and delight in its misery and destruction. But why? Because he's an asshole, and he can literally. That's it. He's known as the crawling chaos. Again, I don't get a chance to dork out like this too often, so it's kind of nice. It's... There's just so much dust. Oop. One, one, one of my favorite tropes is in horror movies, or basically anything that happens historical period piece where they have candles. Can you just imagine having to be that person who has to walk around, light all the candles, that the room is literally bright enough, and at some point you're going to have to go around either replenish all those candles or put all those candles out? It takes 30 minutes to turn off the goddamn lights. Well, uh, back in those days, you had something called servants. And if you were in the South, they were called something different. Oh, boy. And it's literally, how do you think a lot of the, the menial jobs were done? It was with cheap or unpaid labor in some in most cases. And then in the well, no way, it's, it's it's Boston area, right? So they would have had um you remember the gas lights? Yeah. So they would have had uh natural gas delivered back way back in the day. So these buildings since like the late seventeen hundreds would have had gas candlelight. Dangerous as shit when you think about it, your house could easily blow up. Oh. But you you ever seen that before? Where they would have, uh, you know, they, you ever heard, like, or even the movie Gaslight? Mm-hmm. It's literally, like, where the natural gas goes to the house, they went directly to each of those lamps. And you turn them on or off, just like you would uh, a fireplace. I'm guessing pretty much everybody dies in this movie, because it is a fucking cosmic horror film. Well, yeah, well, it's meant to be, like, they go there, mesh of forces they don't understand. And, of course... You know, you go to the spooky house, something bad's going to happen, especially when it's the 80s, so you have ill intentions towards women or men. Um, and, yeah, things do not turn out happy in the end. We do not get the full house ending. Although you could very much draw the parallel with, like, fucking Scooby-Doo. Which I know, this is going to sound really fucked up, the last, one of the last Scooby-Doo series that was on TV actually had a Cthulhu-esque ending. Like, it was really fucking out there. Our friend D uh, talked about it um, a while ago on Facebook or whatever, and he and they were like, hey, check this out. It's really freaking strange. Um, and it was like Inception levels of weird. And I want to say they've actually fought Cthulhu. I, th- I think even on Supernatural they've touched upon it. Um, I would just not be going in random houses, like with only a candle, like opening up coffins. Yeah, no, that's asking for a world of trouble and or hurt. But I, I, I do dig the atmosphere from just the single candle and the candle holder walking around as opposed to walking around with a flashlight, or even today. You know how unscary haunted houses are? I mean, they do it on ghost adventures all the time with, like, fucking night vision goggles, thermal sensors. And now I have a cat. Get off me. You're going to pull the mic apart. You be good boy. He just wants love. Dr. Wiley is crawling all over Alex looking for a place to sit, which he's choosing Alex's chest, and now he's sitting down with Alex's, with Wiley's butt in Alex's face. Do you have anything you want to say, Wiley? No. He apparently <laughs> says no. But when he puts his butt towards you, it means he loves you and he trusts you. He put his cat butt right on my neck. <laughs> he's such a good boy, though. Dr. Wiley's just getting over a cold. So for those of you who wonder on social media, he's feeling better. He's eating. He's sleeping with me at night now. So he's a good boy. Because his parents baby him. Yeah. (laughs) He's their little prince. It's true. Although, speaking of his little prince, Alex, for my birthday last week, got Dr. Wiley his own little cape. 
it's technically for any of your cats, but I, I would love to see you try to put it on Ayla. I'd have to get, I, I'd have to scruff her and have Blair do it. I don't know what she would do. If you do it, we'd have to watch it on video. Oh, God, yeah. Because you'd only ever get that on the cat yep. once. Yep. Before she's like, fuck you. Put it on Wiley and he walks backwards like he's moonwalking. Or he falls over. And he just, he, he, it's a turnoff. Like, not as turnoff as in he's, he's, you know what I'm talking about. It turns the cat off. He just yeah. falls on his side with his leg straight out. He pulls like a commander data and just goes, eh. <laughs> Yes, the most sensible man in your group is the one playing a prank on you. Not buying it. Why is there a door in the attic shorter than, than it should be? On And also under heavy lock and chain. Yeah. Creepy. That makes me think of that Trios of Horror episode where, where the Simpsons, where they kept Bart's brother. Hugo? Was, yeah, Hubert or whatever. Hugo, and he turned out to be the good, the good son. <laughs> Monster. Oh, nope. What the hell kind of scream was that? I didn't see anything in the window. Oh. Did you see anything in the window? I saw something very, very, very briefly. Okay, now your cat buried his head on me, but I had to move him because he was trying to bury his head underneath my pants. Oh. Like he's burying his way into me. <laughs> yes, it's warm down there. Stop. <laughs> and gross. Well, he's being eaten live. Yeah, if you're in a, a Lovecraft story and you're cannon fodder, you don't die in nice ways. You notice how they're pretty ambiguous about what year it is? I haven't seen any cars yet either. It's the ambiguous year of Goldberg's favorite. 19 yes, it's Miskatonic. I'm excited. That's the equivalent of me seeing Soundwave in Transformers Bumblebee. Yes, it's only a few frames, but I'm happy. Wow, the bitch club. Maybe don't be loud about being the last people to see a friend live in a library where people are staring at you. <laughs> say, yeah, this may not be the best way to establish your soon-to-be-needed alibi. <laughs> no, let's wait until it's dark and spooky. His hair looks like it's glued in place. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, dear. Very pretty. Did you... Did, there, yeah, there were nipples. <laughs> it's because been, why not? Because it's been remastered and because... 80s genre flick yeah pretty much and that's how a lot of these girls got cast which i didn't know until the documentary a lot of people got taken advantage of uh but not they did say not everyone was yeah this is like that, if that, you're gonna make it you gotta take a chance a lot of them would only do the scripts if they were decent scripts anyway mm-hmm 
And if you're a, an actor, let's face it, not everything you're gonna gonna be doing is Shakespeare in the park. You're gonna take a risk with weird stuff. And horror movies were very much an easy way well, to get in. Especially back then, because you could almost guarantee every horror film had at least a limited run in theaters. Yep. So you got your your face or whatever in front of a lot of people. Which one of the things I've noticed, I, I, I've been kind of reading through this too, and it's just a trend I'm noticing. They tend to hire a lot of former people from Playhouse or from Playboy and Penthouse. Because they don't care if their boobs are shown. Yeah, they're just comfortable with it. Um, and sometimes you get a decent performance out of them. Because I know one of the girls from the Vineyard was some kind of a model. Uh, she was a Playboy pen up girl, and she married Chuck Lorre. But so, yeah. Like the producer. She, and one of the girl, the girl from the sequel, end up en- ended up marrying Kevin Eastman of the Ninja Turtles fame. So dorks, uh, go get him. See, because oh. he's a dork. Your cat has now decided to die on me. I've been playing with his paws, and he won't move. He's breathing and purring, but he won't move. He's a good cat. Oh, Dr. Weepy. I would name an animal Lovecraft. Cthulhu is H- just HP weird. Lovecraft? Super. Yeah, I, I'd go like, you know what? come here, Lovecraft. You know what, it makes me think of HP sauce. Well, you know what HP stands for? I only found this out like yesterday. What? House of Parliament sauce. Because weird. the logo is the House of Parliament. Huh. Now, now you know. And what does it taste like? It tastes like ass. It's terrible A1 steak sauce, but worse. I like HP sauce. I love HP sauce on eggs. And everybody on eggs, wore a... It's so much vinegar in Worcestershire. You don't put that shit on eggs. You nasty bitch. I, th- I think I'm part British. You nasty, nasty, nasty man. Also, another 80s freaking stereotype is the dweeb looking um, university types. Sort of like the frat boys, but not the Animal House fun frat boys. Like the, the like like what if Rick Moranis was trying to be an Animal House frat boy? Kind of, yeah. Like you get these like alpha betas or whatever the hell they were called, like the asshole wearing ascots or whatever. Like seriously, what makes you wake up in the morning and decide, hey, I want to look like fucking Fred from Scooby Doo? I'm asking the girl, what makes you wake up in the morning and go, I'm going to wear my grandma's sweater, which is five sizes too big, no bra, and have my boobs fall out the sides. Yeah, it's just not an outfit you reasonably put put together. It's not an outfit they would let you wear at the university back then. Probably not. Yeah, you probably go like, go back to your dorm and change. Like, it's literally a sweater I would wear. That's how big it is. Yeah, it's a little big. So basically, they're all going to get together and do the thing where they go to a haunted house to have sex. Yeah. Cool. Sort of like, it's cool. You should come with us. Aw, my big boy. We do baby him too much. He's curled his paws and his tail in, and he's laying down, purposely putting his head uh, on my side, trying his best to dig into me as much as he can so I won't move. (laughs) Although, just had a thought. Do you think kids tell many ghost stories these days? Yeah, creepypasta. All the stuff oh, online. Oh, right, yeah, like Slender Man. Uh, people don't read, no. Kids don't tell stories like that. They read them on Reddit under uh, No Sleep. And, oh. And, and forums like, have you ever read No Sleep? No, but now it's, I'm going it's to. people tell, telling like 30 or 40 page terrifying stories that are supposed How many of them are true? That's or the, allegedly true. That's the idea. They're, they're all supposed to allegedly be true, or you write them in such a way that they are. I have had almost nightmares from reading some of them. Some of them are not great, but some of them are amazing. So you find the ones that are rated like hottest of all time and mm-hmm. read through them. I think I'm yeah. going to have to load that up it's, it's, on it's, my phone. It's literally Reddit is how people tell ghost stories now. That's kind of cool, because I remember um, I stumbled upon a Reddit thread probably about four years ago now where they talked about not Lovecraftian space horror, but they talked about uh, Native American skinwalkers. So basically the modern-day werewolf or things that have never been human that become human. 
like cats or dogs or whatever. And you hear some pretty weird shit. Kind of like how Randolph Carter there's reading books of folklore. I wonder what modern folk. Hey, look, it's our first. It's our first commercial break, and it's not at. That's a, another thing I like with Tubi. The commercial breaks are never placed to be totally intrusive. They come at reasonable points. Like they never come to a point where you're like, "Fuck, you couldn't have waited ten seconds." They're like, "Okay, here's your commercial break in out." Which means I believe these are put here by humans. Not live every time, but there's a, there's an, an intelligence behind it. I never understood the idea of wearing a sweater as like a scarf. That that college BS, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I never understood that. I mean, one of the things I used I used to do is I'd wear a sweater that was too big or whatever, and I tie it around my waist, but never around the neck. You always look like an asshole. There's no way to make it look cool. There really isn't. I only ever tied a coat around my waist when I split my pants one time really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was out for recess in the first or second grade, and I went and did the splits and split it from the front of the crotch all the way up the ass crack right to the belt line. So you basically had chaps. Oh, it was so bad. It was so bad. And when I did it, I ended up farting, and I almost sharded myself, I think. so. Wow, that would have been a fun embarrassment time. So I tied my jacket around me, went to class, and I went to the teacher. I'm like, what happened? I split my pants. And then they made me go to the office, and my parents came with track pants. <laughs> they went up. They said, oh, Alex isn't feeling so good. He's going to go bathroom. And then I came back to class. I'm like, what happened? And my friends are like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I split my pants. I told them because I was like, it's, it's one thing to tell them after the fact. It's another thing to have it happen and be embarrassed in the moment. When I was in high school, um, I went out front of my, of my high school. This was in February. And I slipped on a patch of ice and split my jeans. So they basically turned in the chaps. This went from the crotch all the way up to up up the butt. So I managed to run inside before anybody saw me. Went in the bathroom and I had to wait in the nurse's office for a half hour for my dad to drive in from the town I was from to bring me new pants in Owen Sound. Yeah, like and that's one thing I think like every parent is usually good about because I was young enough that what they did was they gave me temporary uh, track pants to use. Um, now my wife is because in the first grade I wasn't obviously like nearly as big as I am now, but they gave me fifth grader uh, pants to wear <laughs> for, the, for the gym class, so I wore that, and then they uh, my parents came in with real pants for me, and and what's funny was I thought I would get to keep the school pants. Nope, they just took them and washed them because those were the school pants. And I remember asking what were they for? It's for when people split their pants. For just such an occasion. Yep, they they had like you know like sizes for like grade one, grade three, grade five, and grades like seven. So they sort of had like larges in each of those sizes. And the idea was these are the emergency like it was supposed to be like if you got sick on yourself or if you fell on like mud or something. But really, they were there for split pants because when you have a school of seven or eight hundred kids, you know what happens a few times a year. You know, I just have a thought just now, which nobody tends to think about. Okay, so they're in the house. The door is now locked, and they can't open it. Why does nobody bust a window? Yeah, why does nobody just bust a window? Just say, fuck it. Because odds but, are but, the entity... Okay, let's say... Even, okay, but, but it's Cthulhu. So they would easily go to the window and find out now the windows are all gone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like They could just be like, oh, the windows no longer exist. See, yeah, that is something I'm willing to accept. But no one ever thinks, oh, let's go through the window. I mean, let's say, let's say you couldn't open the window. You can sure as hell break it nine times out of ten. But, you know, again, horror movie logic.
I'll say this. There's not a music budget for this movie. No. It's very generic sounding. It's weird. Like some of them are trying accents, and some of them aren't trying accents. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't get it exactly. They're obviously young actors that hadn't done a whole lot, but they're pretty good so far. Yeah, but so that's that's one thing. With certain movies, the cast has to make it. There has to be a chemistry, and the guy that plays Carter has the strongest. Pr- like he suits the part. He's suitably boring in how he presents himself, but that's who Carter is. Very down to earth, very mundane, but very smart, but not to the point of arrogant. And that's what I dig about this. A lot of this movie rides on him and his chemistry. The other people are disposable meat bags, but they're not so unlikable where you're like, oh man, I hope the monster kills them in the next five minutes. If these people are super clean and super hot and kind of bitchy girls and all that, why are they laying down on like the dirtiest, dingiest looking building? Nasty, nasty, dusty building. Because you dust. I don't want to go in no murderer's home like where it's like, it's like, hey, maybe we can have sex. It'd be like, if a girl wants to have sex with me in a place that dirty, I don't want to have sex with that girl. Yeah, no, you. Like, they didn't bring, like, their own blanket. Like, if they were, like, we're going to stay here, and they put down, like, some sheets or something, I'd still be, like, nasty. You don't want no, like, bed bugs or whatever you're going to get from this place. But yeah, yeah, like, it's old, it's creepy, it's dusty. You don't know what, what's been there. And considering they probably have at least a rough idea of the history of this house. Well, yeah, they were talking about it. And then some people will be like, well, maybe, they, maybe I want somebody to be aggressive and, and kinky and do that in the weird house. And I would be like, no, no re- reality, set in. That's going to be somebody where you're going to catch, like, several diseases from. Plus, she just saw a giant fucking rat. Like, all right, that's enough of this spooky shit. We're now going to call the exterminator and or leave. Michael, what do you call uh, a, a baby spawn of an elephant and a rhino? What? Elephino. <laughs> <laughs> Dad jokes for the win. What does it have to do with this movie? Nothing. But I can... Oh, those really fucking spicy hot Dorito things. They're working their way downwards. Oh, God. I can feel the gurgling. I'm holding in uh, the air blasts as, as I currently have a cat on me, and I'll be murdered if I let one go in this chair. So I'm going to hold it as best I can. But if you see me sweating like I'm dying, it's that's because, why. That's why. And if you hear Michael go, oh my God, you'll know why. Scooby, Scooby, do and all for where are you? I took a sacrifice so Michael could get his XP, <laughs> his XP bonus code. Thank you, Call of Duty. Oh, fuck. Well, I think here comes the parts. <laughs> oh boy, I don't know whether you heard that on on my. I, I certainly but... hope not, but it, oh, I feel so much better. A chair. Because we're really classy. <laughs> oh, man. How many times have we started a show where, where one of us burped by accident? 
Yep, I, I used to remember getting feedback about the burps. Like, don't do it. Don't do it. Sometimes you can't even edit around them, though. Yeah, like sometimes it's just a part of you talking, and it sounds weird. It's really funny when you do the talk, and then it just comes out of nowhere. You're like, Bleh. <laughs> So, the, the one jock looks like Rowdy Roddy Piper a little bit. I can see that. Yeah, let's see here. Everything has dust. Everything. The cat's mad at me because I keep moving around. Aww. My baby boy. I just wouldn't go to a house that is so old it doesn't have electricity and that it's run down like that. You could fall to the floors easily. Especially a house that has, like, a dangerous rep. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, if it's old enough to be written about in folklore books, probably you don't want to be hanging around. Again, Scooby Doo vibes here. Uh, what? So they ran after their friends, they're fucking gone. They're doing a good job of giving creepy angles to everything. Something gross is going to happen, isn't it? movie would be less intimidating if they had like fucking mag lights or, or those giant 80s flashlights that had like the cell car battery. phone with an LED torch now we're we're at the point where it's like it's Cthulhu-esque but it's brilliant in that you can make a movie super cheap it's just people walking slowly through a building setting up atmosphere it costs like nothing to do that yeah and you don't see a lot of ha- haunted house movies or at least in my opinion you don't see remarkably few done well was Crimson Peak probably the last major one um, I would say, like, as far as like big budget, Crimson Peak. Um, uh, what was it? What was it? Thirteen Ghosts was another haunted house one. Oh, uh, with Matthew Lillard. Was he in which, that one? Which is weird. He was talking about this on Twitter like a few weeks ago. He's like, "Yeah, I'd avoid it too." Thirteen Ghosts scared me as a child. No, I would say The Haunting. Remember that with Liam Neeson? Yes. That was a good haunted house movie. I actually have a story behind that. I saw that with with my friend Jared. We went on uh, on cheap night, and where the ghost jumps out of, or the the skeleton comes out of the fireplace, everyone in the theater is like, ah! and me and Jared start laughing, and he turns around to the audience like, "Ooh, it's bones! What's it gonna do to you?" And I just lost my shit laughing at. Well, it was the, one of the first movies to have really high CGI budget. Where like, remember where the the curtains come to life? Yep, and that still looks decent. And the other one that was like Haunted House, I guess, Haunted-esque. That House has, on Haunted Hill or whatever? Yeah, but no, but that has amazing graphics. In, and to this day, that people forget, The Frighteners. The, yes. the last Michael J. Fox movie before he got diagnosed with Parkinson's. Um, I think it was actually on that set where he started feeling it. But that movie, like people forget how good Jake Busey can be in the right role. And him as the serial killer ghost. Fantastic. Sorry, spoilers, but that movie is you know, 23 years old, so too fucking bad. <laughs> But yeah, some of those movies have really good CG from the '90s, and you forget that they how they handled themselves. Mm-hmm. Like uh, again, when you get the right director and producer team working together on a genre movie, you can get some fantastic results. I'm actually just going to take a look very briefly and see what else this director has done. Okay, so now we're getting a killer's eye look, which we usually get would get earlier in the movie, but I guess it's the first time they've shown it. A little out of focus, too, which is weird. Evidently, he was involved in The Terminator. He now mo- mainly works for TV. He hasn't directed a lot, actually, but he was the second unit director for The Terminator. Somebody's going to get dead right now.
Oh, baby, time to get naked. Time to. You they know. did put down gross ass sheets. Which they it, found. Oh, that's right. Ew. Ew, but she's very pretty, and he's pretty good looking, but she's very pretty. And we're probably going to see a lot of gross stuff right now because it is an 80s movie. And, yup. He goes for the move. The classic, they may Wait, say. Wait, they right, Boom. Uh, those aren't pasties. That is a boob. That's an actual boob. Also, they were smart. They didn't make him unbutton the shirt or anything. He's just like, bam, the shirt's magically unbuttoned. Uh, that's a bone. That's a bloody bone. Wow, they're and they just threw it away so they can go back to having sex. See, so, yeah, that's <laughs> that's a mood killer right there. Oh, I found a bloody Again, piece of red of flag. Person. That bitch is crazy. She's like, ah, oh, it's not that. It's just that bad. No, I'd be like, no, girl, we are not having sex on top of dead bodies. Oh, now he's getting handsy. Um, with another. That's the other one. Oh, so I, I think I know who survives. <laughs> well, wait. Do you think they would follow that trope, or would they actually go with what the story was? I can't remember, actually. I'm sorry. I got these urges. If I don't finish, it's going to hurt me. Oh, boy. As said by every single uh, sex ed thing to avoid ever, right? And now we're back to what? The sexy time. Okay, sure. Wait. They're showing a little more than you normally would. Wait, wait. She had her shirt completely off, and now it's back on again. Of course. You see the continuity issue? Yep. They just wanted additional coverage for whatever reason. Yeah. Not like he's complaining. No. And she doesn't look like she would be complaining either. That's a bum bum. That's okay. Are you sure it's in the porno? Oh, boy. No, it's not a porno, but it's uh, it's probably as graphic as you're going to get with an 80s movie that's R-rated. Oh, Oh, God. Now, if she continues after this, then fucking back away. (laughs) Ooh, that's pretty damn good. Wait, so he just lays down right next to it and looks right in the eyes? Like, uh... We are leaving. It sounded like it might have just been in my head. It sounded like the Star Trek doors opening sound. <laughs> you know, the sh- yeah, whoosh. Don't you love watching the bloopers when they show how it was like two guys that had to pull it open? And sometimes right. they were out of sync and they would, and like Shatner would bump his head on it. Oh, what was that? That was shock and awe, literally. And, of course, look at the angle. Uh, well now, whoa, that's actually pretty good. Who did the makeup effects? Let's find out. It does not say, but let me take a look at IMDb. It doesn't look like Savini because he has a very distinct Oh look. God, no. This is a little bit below him. But it's still good. Oh my god, I've got to help you. Blah, blah, blah. As his neck just spurts. Makeup department. Oh my god, dude. That, is he all. Look at that shit. Blah, 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 blah. Um, evidently, the guy who worked on this worked on Nightmare 3, Demolition Man, 
and oh. uh, Star Trek VI. Demolition Man had some pretty good effects. And Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko, that is an underrated movie. He was also involved in the Super Mario Brothers movie. How much you want to bet he's the guy that helped develop the uh, the fungus slime? I can believe it. Oh, there's our first look at the monster. And is this supposed to be like an elder god? No, this one is just the spirit of a girl who's been trapped in the house crossed with some demon. I said, some of Lovecraft stuff went in the Cosmic War, some just went spooky. Well, that was weird. That was a great shot, too. It looked like demons splitting in two. So now the saviors are there to save the day, basically, with their science and knowledge of science. Well, of course. Now the cat is back, and he smells like cat food. I'm pretty sure I've seen a few of these actors before, and I know the girl, the one that showed her boobs, I've seen her in other things too, as she got older. Mm -hmm. But I can't pinpoint anything directly. They're smart not to use like super well-knowns, but they're all decent enough actors. Yeah, I'll see who the woman was, so it's, uh, let me see. What's her name in this? Wendy. Boo, 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 Booby McGee or something? Booby McGee. Let's see. Wendy. Oh, that's Tanya, okay. Alexander Durrell. Um, Evidently, she pr- helped produce this. Booby Girl or Other Girl? Her. Let me get Booby Girl's name. <laughs> okay, that's some pretty bad acting right here. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Wendy, what have you done? That's Laura Albert. She was in The Town, Shameless, War Dogs. So she's been pretty busy. Evidently, she's a stunt woman. The boob girl? From the look of it, she was in Grey's Anatomy. Okay. I'm sorry for calling her that, but I didn't catch her name at the beginning. I just was watching her, so... (laughs) Evidently, she was in Nash Bridges, though I think Blanchard happy. If we show show him this, he'll know the episode, how long she was in it, and then he'll connect that to another show that she was in that was also connected. Everything, like... You know, six degrees of separation or six degrees of Kevin Bacon? With, six degrees with, with Blanchard, of with, with, with Blanchard, it's six degrees of Knight Rider. It all, <laughs> it, it all ends up back to Hasselhoff. You're dead. Oh. I also like how they don't show the creature in full light very often. You only catch yeah, glimpses. Because that would make it look a little hokey. Well, yeah, I mean. But it's, but it's a good costume from what I can see. When you give away the monster, it takes away a lot of its effect. (laughs) 
That was actually kind of a gross way to die. Just to have your head slowly bashed in. Yeah, pretty gross. Yeah, the girl that's left is named Alexandra Durrell. Tanya there. She's only ap- appeared in a few things. Surprise, surprise, she survives, right? Yep. She was the co-producer is on she the Is German Bowl. or something? Because she's got an accent. Oh. Wait, she hit under the bed as he was being murdered? Wouldn't you if you saw a scary monster? Yeah. She get out? So it's a Yeti? The Yeti. He's cloven hooved anyway. This main guy here looks like a... A uh, college buddy of mine is a year ahead of me named Renee. He just has a very similar look. Come on, although, Howard. Although Renee's a little thinner than him. You are very brave. Hello. I speak English for good. (laughs) Is he Howard for Howard Lovecraft? Probably. I want to see what else he's done. A little curious. He's Charles Klausmeyer. He was in Superman Returns. Yeah, but a lot of these guys would look, be in He's their... In Soul Calibur 6. A lot of these guys would be in their 50s or 60s now. Weird. He plays Raphael Sorel in Soul Calibur 6. He's Nightmare in Raphael. That's cool. He's the voice. Well, the dude's reading crazy old folklore book. It looks like it's written in parchment paper and blood. So that's always good, right? Yes, completely not threatening at all. I never thought the guy from this would be fucking Nightmare from Soul Calibur. And oh yeah, evidently here, Randolph Curry's just randomly checking out the Necronomicon, the Book of the Dead, just hanging out in some random house. Which just goes to the point, like in any RPG, explore every room, check every chest. I hate to say this, but I think after this DVD commentary, I'm going to have to go to bed. I am remarkably tired. You think so? It has been an eventful night for those it of has. you that haven't been following my social media. If you look up social media over the last few days, you'll know what's happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll leave you to go back and look. Let's just say it was a rather strange night. Just search like Fatty Boom Boom and you'll see something. Fatty Boom Boom. You'll see what happened. But either way, uh, I think this this is a good movie to end uh, our marathon on for now. Creepy. Oh, for a second I thought they found David Carradine. Hoyo! Oh! Because you remember how he died? Autoerotic asphyxiation? Yeah. He probably went out as he wanted to. (laughs) That's remarkably dark. Oh, dear. (laughs) I do love that they have like full on cop like 
flashlights. Yeah, they where, big where, fucking mag where it takes like five, you know, C or D cell batteries. But those things are good for like a several hours of that brightness. I had one gifted to me when I was younger, and I wish I still had it. I saw a guy running from the police one time when I was younger in the dark. And instead of hitting him with a billy club to stop him because he was being violent. Hit him with a flashlight. It was when I was in Toronto, and they beat him over the head with a flashlight just to knock him down. Not like beat him, like beat him, beat him. You know what I mean? Like knock the guy to the ground. And you realize those things weigh like six pounds <laughs> when you have all the batteries in it, right? Oh, yeah. They are. <laughs> it's not. like they're, And these are the ones that weren't the LEDs. These are the ones that had the like halogen incandescent light bulbs in them. Yeah, like th- that is not a love tap. Run away, get back here. No, boop. <laughs> he was on the ground. It was pretty funny. <laughs> was it police brutality? Eh, it wasn't in like 94. <laughs> if that makes any sense. But I mean, that's that sort of stuff used to happen at the Scarborough Town Center all the time. Okay, so basically he's uncovered the actual history of the building. Yeah, he's basically, okay, what's going on is not bullshit. There's magic involved, and I better figure this out quick. Which, again, another Lovecraftian trope. Something is evil, I have to study. Hell, this would be a good example of how most Call of Cthulhu uh, RPG sh- uh, sessions go. Something terrible is happening. Oh, consult the library. Uh, except role. an art campaign when we did it. Yeah, you attacked the dark young with, with a flamethrower. Yeah, uh, I forget. We all ended up dying, right? No, you got framed for murder. Oh, I got framed for murder. That's right. Yeah. Did everybody else die? Um, did like did Tiff die? I think one of you died, but you got framed for murder. Were we pl- who were we playing with? Uh, uh, Tiffany, um, it- Brent, and you. <laughs> I'm That's- not using his other nickname. Here. I was going to. Out of respect for Brent, I will not call him that. We'll just call him Cthulhu Legs. <laughs> it works in this case. But yes, that's right. That was a fun game. Yeah, Call of Cthulhu, it, it's a game if you have the right players. It can be really dark, can be really atmospheric, but you have to have the believability buy-in from everybody. And that's the, the thing about Cthulhu Mythos. Sure, you could probably kill Cthulhu with with a mounted M60 and a grenade launcher, but he'll just come back and be pissed off. Like, bullets yeah. don't always like, work. Basically, you have to banish him to another dimension. And even then, he'll be back in 10 minutes. Uh, the idea, you have to make it so that this world is, this universe and world is unappealing to him. Yeah. So that he can move on to something more interesting. Well, the thing about the Cthulhu mythos, and it's always been the the main appeal of it, is humanity exi- there's a, gr- a great quote by Lovecraft, and I can't remember precisely how it's phrased, so I'm paraphrasing here. Humanity lives in a sea of ignorance, and it is not meant that we should venture far from it. So the best humanity can do in these cosmic sort of threat sit- situations or in the face of impossible odds and monsters is the best you can hope for is to break even. If that's the best you can accomplish, you've done pretty good. If you can make it out with your own sanity and a brief understanding in your own mind of what happened, that's it. Yeah, and even the briefest knowledge is corrupting to you. And that's the thing. Knowledge is power, but knowledge is also, ow, a main reason to go insane. Yeah, so far, this is not bad. It is a slow-moving movie. I'm not... But I... It's I not don't class know, of 1999. I don't know if it would work in, for today's audiences. You'd have to, again, the thing is to have the buy-in from the audience. And haunted house music, like they're hard to pull off effectively. No, I mean, I, I think there would have to be more people to kill in, in the time span mm-hmm. for, for a modern movie. An, another ha- haunted movie that I think works well but maybe didn't necessarily get a fair shake at the box office. I recently became aware of it was Oculus, um, which is about haunted objects and the evil within. This could almost fall into that, like the haunted house, the haunted object being the house. Oh, here comes Tanya. Such big hair. <laughs> She's got like a sickle.
Well, we know she's going to die real soon. Oh, yeah. Whoa. You're telling me he's not stronger than like a hundred pound her? Yeah, but she's got oh, that. Oh, well, fear she's also strength. dead now. Oh. Uh, okay. Whoa. Now there were three. Carter Did you Wendy notice Howard. we only had one ad in the middle of it? Yeah. Other Which, times you get more. I, th- I think it depends on the property. I really think so, too. Like, whatever the licensing... If it costs them less for the licensing, they do less commercials. Your mileage may vary. <laughs> because yes. depending on the region where it's delivering you the, the ads... But so far, we've only had a minute and a half, and that was a minute at the beginning and like 15, 20 15, seconds. 15, 20 seconds like an hour ago. It's also not the Book of the Dead from like Sam Raimi's uh, Evil Dead movies, where it's not, it's it's not a bound in human. It's flesh. not a living possessed book. Exactly, it's just a book of forbidden knowledge. It would have been neat had he had to use like Cthulhu Mythos mainstay of the Vurish sign, which is a quote unquote holy sign. In the Cthulhu mythos that scares off creatures, that would made the 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 door open. But again, I'm looking for deep cuts, and there's probably tons of Easter eggs hidden in here that I'm not pick pick picking up on. So now he's a Cthulhu wizard. Yep, he technically would have lost some sanity there. Cost him some some willpower. Although he doesn't appear to be phased because he was already a believer in like the science of it, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. So I don't. I think doing simple spells wouldn't do it. It would have to be something other than turning the lights on and opening a door. Well, according to game rules, it would still impact him on some level. Even a minor interaction with the mythos leaves you with that fear and loathing of yourself. And that's another thing I've always liked about the color flavor. Of Cthulhu, there are no simple interactions with unnatural things. Every interaction leaves you different. Which some so, of it can be overly dramatic. So did, some did you it... notice that the cult hasn't come back in the beginning of the movie? Mm-hmm. I wonder if they're going to make their appearance at the end or if they're like monitoring the town or something. Ow. You. This can't end well. Did he just go to bed in a, in a coffin and wake up somewhere else? Or is he... I don't understand what's happening. Or is this is the other guy. This is the one that had the girl die on top of him. Yeah, Howard, yeah.
<laughs> I love that he stumbled. That wasn't scripted, you could tell. He just <laughs> kept it in. You. That's the worst feeling in the world is having cobwebs in your face, man. Next to a tarantula. Yeah, no. Hard pass. But again, for this woman being a producer on this movie, to be such a big Lovecraftian fan, that's got to be something kind of cool. Well, in a time when there weren't a ton of women producers in genre films in general. Mm Mm-hmm. The only producer I can name of even remotely from this time period is Gail Ann Hurd, who worked on The Terminator Um, and Aliens. And Deborah Hill. Yeah, from uh, the Halloween series. That's basically it, right? Like, there's probably more, but these those are the two. But as far as ones that had already made it big. Mm -hmm. Anybody? I would just fucking walk out. Say, yep. I'm done. We're done for the day. Good day. But hey, you got to give him credit for sticking around. It's either very brave or very stupid. Wait, she waited till she got that close before she saw that he was dead? Uh, it's pretty gross. <laughs> Some of the dialogue here is a little off. Yeah. But they're still delivering it pretty good. So I'm assuming we're at the final showdown now. Yeah, we're coming to it, yeah. <laughs> There's a hand there. <laughs> the brain's Oh, smelling. God. It's pretty fucking gruesome. What a large house. Like, very large. Yeah. Well, I don't like the idea of a weird-looking pit in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I also don't, don't like the, the idea attic. that you don't know where it goes, can find space. Well, because you're in an attic, and you didn't see that hole in anywhere else in the building. Mm-hmm. Yes, that that piece of driftwood. Oh, God, he's raising the dead, isn't he? That's generally how it goes, right? Raise the dead to solve one problem, create another problem. But say, yeah, unless you know precisely what you're dealing with, don't mess with magic. Hell, man. Believe what you will about the occult, but uh, maybe don't play with forces you don't understand. 
I was told uh, a story the other day. A friend of mine started messing around with a Ouija board, and it got so intense she won't she won't talk about it. And this is a person I know to be fairly open with stories, and a person I know not to be a liar as well. Everybody's so scared of everything. Like, you know, it, it's weird the way they scream in this. Do you notice that? It's like, yeah. Rah. And they try and use it where they see something weird in the glass, but they never show it. Or if they do, it's for like a split second. <laughs> oh, in this case, it's the fucking monster. Sure. Because, of course, it is. Oh. It looks like an ancient uh, goblin. Or like a gargoyle or something. Yeah, in the second movie, she's defeated with, with insulin. That's what I've heard about it before. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the most interesting ways I've ever seen a movie villain ever be dealt with. Ew, they gave her creepy old lady boobs like like an it too. Whoa. Question, man or woman in the suit, you think? Probably a man, all things considered, because they want probably... What if it ended up being like Doug Jones or somebody like in his early... In early or, career. Yeah. Or the guy who was inside the like alien outfit. He's like six. I think the guy who's inside the alien outfit is like something like six foot something. Well, the predator guy wasn't he almost seven feet tall? Something like that. Crank her with the mag light. Oh, God. Whoa, she broke her wrist? That's pretty gruesome, too. One good shot, too. Well, I guess it's a not the strongest animal you'd think. Glass cannon. <laughs> and now man. it's crying. No, don't hurt it. The demon that ate everybody. Oh. Whoa! So it's actually basically only winning by surprise attacks. Wait. Oh, so he's he called the spirit of the old guy that died that was her father? Yeah. To basically pull her into the afterlife? I think so. You notice that in a lot of Cthulhu mythos, people don't have guns? Yeah, because Cthulhu mythos, guns are essentially useless. Well, also, like... Not everybody had guns in the Northeast, like, in the 20s. Not everybody. You had, like, a hunting rifle, but people didn't carry pistols around. It was, that was, like, a West thing or a Southern thing.
Whoa. There's the trailer shot right there. Oh. What was that? Like, I don't get what's happening. Uh, binding the evil to the tree out front. <laughs> but he's probably dead. I like that. But... <laughs> oh, he got a kiss. Oh, no. That, all this for a kiss? Fuck that. <laughs> like, 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 as if that's supposed to be, like, a reward for doing well. But, yeah, Fuck. And yeah, he gets the girl and she gets the guy. They're meant for each other. Well, that's... What? Oh, so he raised all the dead, not just one dead. So that, that was a mistake. Whoa. It's Carter. So he went down to hell... To find the father and bring him back. Or raise him through the crypt. Okay. Quickly, bury the dead. Yeah, we again. Even though we've disturbed them. Freakiest scene I ever saw as a kid Poltergeist Pool. I was like five. Oh yeah, that that will give you nightmares when you're five. The clown. No, 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 no. Try being seven years old and um, Saturday Night at the Movies, which remember with Ilvyost on on TVO, which used to air on uncut movies. They aired Fire in the Sky when I was like seven. Oh dear. The scene with the abduction. Oh boy. That didn't go over too well with my parents when they found out I was watching it like seven years old. And then the movie just kind of ends. That's really kind of odd. Because like, the sequel happens immediately afterwards. Okay, so because I was going to say, it doesn't even wait to show the tree or anything. Yeah, it's just, hey, I, mean, I dealt with the evil. It's not bad. It's just, it's a little slow moving for today's audience. and But it does a good job of putting out good cinematography. Yeah, like I said, Lovecraft movies are hard to do well, in my opinion, but this does it pretty well. So, oh, it's randomly starting School of Rock, because why wouldn't it? Which we're not going to watch. We are not watching. So, anyway, guys, I really hope you had a chance to enjoy this commentary, and more or less me rapping about the Cthulhu mythos for the last hour and change, last hour and a half and change. So anyway, um, as always, you want to get in touch with us, feedback at thisweekingeek.net. Always yep. appreciate it. Same with Twitter, that. at This Week in Geek, uh, Facebook. Hit us up personally. You know us by now. Exactly, guys. Like, at Birdman Dot, at Death Phase Twig. We love hearing from you. Um, let me know what you thought of the movie, if you thought it was pretty cool. Or if anybody has the sequel, please let me know. Personally, 6 out of 10, with, yeah. with some good deaths, though. Uh, some 8 out of 10 deaths, but... but Six, six and a half. I just don't I, think it would play. Like I'm thinking of my younger brother. He wouldn't be able to sit through it. Mm-hmm. I think for me, it nails the setting for me. And that's why I'm such a big fan of it. But it is not like the thrill a minute or the ridiculously huge body count of like other horror movies. So anyway, I hope you had a chance to enjoy it. So for Twig uh, commentaries, we have been uh, Alex. And I've been Mike the Birdman Dodd saying, do not call up what you cannot put down. We will be back next time later on this week right here on thisweekingeek.net. Well, that's our show. All right, here's the deal. Every time you watch my show, I will send you $40. Checks will not be honored. You've been listening to This Week in Geek, your source for guaranteed nonsense or your money back. Tune in next week for more info on the most important things you didn't need to know. 
Check out our website at thisweekingeek.net and subscribe to our podcast through iTunes or any podcatcher. If you'd like to comment on this episode, head over to this episode's post at thisweekingeek.net and leave a comment through Facebook Connect. Follow us on Twitter at thisweekingeek.net and follow our Instagram at twig underscore official underscore podcast. Social media not your thing? Send us an email at feedback at thisweekingeek.net. We'll see you next time, and remember... Lower your shields and surrender your listenership. Just when you think this show is terrible, something wonderful happens. What? It ends. (laughs) I have to go. Somewhere there is a crime happening. 